Welcome to Talk Purpose and Truth with Eden and Kim, shifting you into higher consciousness. The show that elevates, uplifts, and encourages listeners to grow, heal, awaken, and evolve. Eden and Kim include bold topics, special interviews with inspiring guests, intuitive readings, channeled messages from beyond, including celebrities, hot topics to expand your awareness, and time for questions from the audience. Tune in for unprecedented truth, authenticity, on purpose discussions, and magical moments. One thing my dad always told me is that, you know, you have to be nice to everybody because the people you pass on the way up are going to be the exact same people you pass on the way down. Take the character lightly because I know that there are a lot of people out there who are scared to be themselves and tell people who they are. So the thing is, I want to try to be a voice for those people. And even if I can help one person, I'm satisfied. And I get very positive feedback from a lot of people because they're telling me what they're going through and and how they relate with Danny. And I think it's truly amazing that I can connect with these people and resonate with them. Yeah. Does it... Do you feel like you have any challenge with like staying grounded in that? Do you, if if you get like a negative feedback, is there ever anything negative? There's been a little bit of negative feedback, but to be honest with you, I I just kind of brush it off. It's it's really not important because one thing my dad says is that if you're not getting any hate, then you're not making well. If you're not getting enough hate, then you're not doing something right. You're not making enough noise. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that is, oh my gosh, you guys, it's so weird that you just said that. Because our, we had, okay, this is really off subject, um, something going on with one of the top, one of the guests that we had on recently, we haven't aired the show yet, um, being, a, how do I put it, I'm, I'm trying not to say it in case I'm not allowed, but, but stuff that came out, the truth that's coming out about her with the, uh, the racist, some racist comments. Anyways, so um, we might, we're, we're considering airing it, but then we might, we're worried about the hate yeah. <laughs> coming in. So, but that is something that I keep hearing is that, you know, you don't want it, but sometimes it it is, it ends up benefiting you. Absolutely. You know, yeah. when Chicago became the biggest pop star in the world, because 49% of the world disliked her. Wow. And 51 really stood up for her and became super fans, you know? And that's really, I mean, especially in the music business, that's how you you really grow an artist is, yeah. is noise. Uh, my wife is a pop star. My wife is Elisa Strata, uh, Chance's stepmom. And, you know, Chance has been born into the entertainment industry. So we would literally like leave our condo downtown Vancouver and paparazzi would be outside and she'd be stopped for photos every five steps and and yet she's a sweet, humble, amazing, most incredible mm-hmm. about systemic racism and, and this is something Chance has been really both of us have been really passionate about and we've been watching documentaries and studying and Romani Malco, uh, you know, who plays Rome on a million little things, he's been very vocal about it. And, and we're learning a ton from him and, and Christina Moses as well. And, yeah. and I, 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 I creep on my son's social media just because, you know, uh, he's my son, you know, <laughs> I literally did. Um, and I see him standing up against racists and, and it makes me incredibly proud. And, and he knows that he's going to get some backlash for that because he's drawing the line in the sand. And, and you know, a lot of people are afraid to get the backlash. There has to be some voices. There has to be some leaders. So, you know, I'm always very proud of Chance when he stands up for a cause. That is, uh, wow. That I would be very proud too. <laughs> yeah. So I might need. We need to learn from you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's. Is it scary though when you do that? Not necessarily. Stand up for what, what you feel is right. Uh, no. To me, really not at all, because, you know, when something like that happens, like my dad said, you know you are going to get some backlash for some people, but at the end of the day, you stood up for what's right and for a good cause. Okay. All right. And I also think another point to that is I never want to just do this for the sake of uh, listens 
or attention. You know, it has to be for yeah. the right reason. Yeah, too. absolutely. Well, Chance, what Chance doesn't mention is Chance really likes to think things through. So he often doesn't make noise till he knows exactly what kind of noise to make. And he does thorough research. So Yeah, so that's he, different. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, I don't think you know, the kids speak off the cuff as much as you see an injustice or something wrong, and then you spend the time to realize what it is before you speak, which I also love, because I might be a little faster to speak, but yeah. Tim really likes to process before you speak. Wow, good for you. <laughs> I have a great mom, I have a great step a great step mom. Yeah, I can tell. I think it all starts with parenting. It's all yeah. about parenting, so yeah, that's part of what I do. I work with people and try to heal their past, their childhood, and it's all, it all comes from, you know, their adulthood is all related and all connected to where, um, to their childhood. So if you start off with that and you, you're molded from good parents, oh my gosh, you're way ahead of many people. It's very, very true. And, and I mean, this, this was passed down from my dad because I had the world's greatest father. And so all I knew was to try to be as greater father as I possibly can for my son and I'm sure he'll be the same way with his kids in the future. Yeah well I always think and I believe that it's true you can't give what you don't get. Very true. And then the opposite you can give it if you did get it so it is like I said it's quite obvious you got what you needed. <laughs> Both of you Adam too. <laughs> we're, we're, we're a very lucky family. We yeah. Really yeah. Awesome, you guys. It's it's rare to see this, I, because I like I said I have clients and I work with many many people, thousands of people over the years who uh, need that to figure out how to parent themselves because they didn't get what they needed. Yeah, yeah, I have these in the same situation as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so well with the show, back to million little things. Um, it's it's all about mental health. Like everybody's going through something, and I love that because it's like life, like real life. Absolutely. Yeah, it's and do they have like um, a consultant on there? Somebody who is a yeah. mental health expert? They do. Okay. Yeah, they have a, a psychiatrist um, who literally reads every script and approves. Uh, oh. You know, DJ Nash, the creator. He, he like I said, he's a incredible guy and he knows that you know the show reaches people that might be on the edge you know yeah. and, and and the show wants to make sure that they don't push anybody too far and they depict things as truthfully and honestly as possible so so yeah absolutely he he, he very much makes sure that the psychiatrist reads the scripts and 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 he'll you know, say, hey, how would this go? Because, you know, he's the head writer as well. Um, and the whole team of writers are incredible, but they really want to make sure that they bring honesty to all the roles. Oh, yeah. It's brilliant. Just brilliant. <laughs> that man, that psychiatrist. It, it, uh, kudos. It, it, you know, I, when we first got the script, I was in China, actually, and um, I read it, and I was like, it's an initiative that I started with my dad and that mom while we were stuck in quarantine and basically it happened when I saw a news article on the Philippines and how horrible their quarantine is going right now because the thing is they're not allowed to go outside so I'll, I'll let you yeah so again. so you know here in you were we're from Canada and uh here when people were basically quarantined, our government would give everybody $2,000 a month. And, and they had like rent subsidies for people that needed it. Um, if you needed the money, they would give you 2000 a month. And even provincial governments would maybe kick in another 1000 even. Um, uh, so our government did a really good job at taking care of us. Uh, in America, uh, same thing, you know, it's not a perfect system by any means. In Canada or America, but there's options, there's avenues, there's 
there's food banks, there's, you know, several, several organizations that will help you. If, if a family's starving, you know, people can literally stand on the street and, and you know, ask for money and they, they're probably going to get some, you know, or a loaf of bread or something. In the film, they get this tiny basket of food and it has to last them the whole month. So what they would do is, is they would boil water and put some scraps in it and call it soup. People were literally starving, and so Chance, you know, came to me, and he, you know, I've been to the Philippines a gazillion times, and I, I love the people and super talented culture, and they're just really, really kind people. And so Chance said, "Dad, I want to do something. I want to try to help." So we that day, that night, we created that Facebook page, the Random Acts of Kindness Army, and invited some friends. And before you know it, we had. You know, 800 people were, were subscribed to it, and the idea was to try to raise money to help the poorest of the poor families. Because like Chance said, they're shut down, and they don't have, they don't own cars, they don't own anything, they have these jeepney taxis, which are, you know, kind of outdoor taxis, and those aren't running. So even if they had a dollar, yeah. Yeah, even if they did have a dollar to the spare to go buy food, the stores are miles and miles away, and they can't get there because all of the tricycle taxis, the drivers aren't allowed to drive them. So even oh. if they had a dollar or two, they can't get food. And babies are drinking boiled water, babies, with oh. a little bit of rice in there and sugar for flavor. And that's that's how they're supposed to grow to be healthy humans. So we, we reached out to some of our influential friends and uh, – created this Random Acts of Kindness Army, and we partnered with the Lions Club in the Philippines, uh, who were on the ground. They were already trying to do some initiatives, so we teamed up with them and raised a bunch of money that went directly to the Lions Club. We have a website, it, it's... What's the R-A-O-K-Army.com. Yeah, R-A-O-K-Army.com, where people could go in and they could buy like a bag of rice, which costs $2, could feed an entire family. Um, well, every penny, helps and um so we you know we we raised all the money every single penny went right to the lions club and the lions club went and bought that food wholesale and delivered it to these villages who you know we jump behind as many causes as possible that's just how our family is and this army i think the idea chance and i at least had was to mobilize an army of great people to help the next cause too, and the next cause, rather than having to align the troops every single time, we've okay. kind of got a basis of people who, you know, now we're helping in Costa Rica. Um, my brother um, took the initiative to do this in Mexico. Um, so, you know, we're, we're trying, the, the army's there and it's only growing. And, you know, whenever there's some sort of a tragedy or, or, or people need help, you know, we, that's kind of what we want to do is try to assemble that army and grow the army to help in future causes as well. Because let's face it, there's so many people needing help in so many various ways. It's not always money either. Like your show helps people, uh, you know, dealing with mental health issues. And, yeah. and, and there's so many things that we still need to do. You know, going on the mental health topic, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar if you recall the story about that 15 year old girl, Amanda Todd, who committed suicide. Uh, how many years ago was that? Seven, years, seven or eight years ago. Um, she was from Vancouver and it became worldwide news. And it was this girl who was bullied online, couldn't oh. anymore, and she killed herself. Uh -huh. And um, I remember, I don't remember how old Chance was, he must have been five four or five and I remember we were in a restaurant at Chance's birthday and it was like a, like a sports kind of restaurant it was Red Robin and, and on the screen I saw the news I don't know why the news was on in there and uh, that story came on and she died the day before Chance's birthday mm. on October 10th that year and Chance's birthday is October 11th and I said how can this kid be having one of the greatest days of his life and receiving all these amazing toys and spoiled by his entire, you know, family and friends, and this other poor girl at 15 decided she couldn't live anymore. Um, so, 
you know, I started investigating and uh, turns out she's from Vancouver also. And I wanted to do something. My wife wanted to do something. So we wrote this song called Wonder Woman that Elisa Strata sang, my wife. And uh, it, we didn't have any plan on what to do with it um, other than we wanted to try to do something like, like donate the money to, to whatever cause the parents chose. And somehow, literally, well, I think it was like two days after she passed away, the word got to a man called mom. And a man uh -huh. messaged me on Twitter and, and basically said, is this really you? Is this really happening? And we started talking. I got in my car and I drove to the suburbs and I sat in the living room down the hall from where Amanda killed herself and, uh -huh. and sat with the mom and stepdad and, and sat with them as they cried. And it was very, very surreal. And so we, we rushed the song as fast as we can. And the radio got behind it in a huge way, it became this big hit, and all of the proceeds went to the Amanda Todd Legacy Foundation, um, which the mom is, you know, Carol Todd, she's on a mission to help. You know, um, what, I, what I've been teaching Chance since birth is the world gives you what you give. You know, if you give someone money and they don't give it back, you're upset about it, but that's not how the world works. If you yeah. give someone money, don't expect it back. The world will give you something else. And our family is living proof of this. You know, my son is only 13. And, you know, if you check his IMDb page, he has a ton of credits. He's in, you know, number one movies in the box office and hit TV show and, and you know, a ton of animation and wins award after award. And, you know, he's a, sure he's a talented kid, but he's also very, very lucky. And that's the world giving him, you know, in return, not that you need anything in return, but the world gives you what you give. And he's yeah. always been such a sweet kid, and the world just keeps giving it back. And my wife and I, this is how our whole family lives. Is we're so fortunate, and it's our job, you know, to to help as many people as we can. And and like I said, with no expectations of receiving anything in return, because the world takes care of us. Yeah, and you know, I'm so glad to connect with you guys because. Kim and I, our show is all about that. So That's amazing. I feel like so aligned with you guys. <laughs> yeah, we are all for that heart putting, you know, giving everything with so much heart, giving yourself. But it's also what I tell people, too, is you have to give just as much back to yourself. Don't forget about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're very right in that. But I, I think, you know, it just kind of like I, I mean I can't speak for everybody, but for us, some reason things just land on us. Even in the worst of times, good luck comes our way. Like COVID nineteen, the the pandemic has been terrible, and somehow our family receives luck through it. Like it's just the weirdest. I can't explain it, other than you know we. But we talk about it. We recognize it. We talk about it. We sit there going. People are starving, and all of a sudden, three more massive opportunities landed on our lap. I think it's partly about gratitude, that you guys live in gratitude. You're, sure. you're grateful for what you have, and, and you're not looking at it like, well, what's next, or I need more. It's, it's you already feel like you have abundance. Absolutely. Enough, yeah. So then I think that's, yeah, you're putting that out into the universe, and that's what you get in return. Yeah. There's no scarcity. <laughs> Exactly. of love and you know because that comes first I can tell like I said the love is first your everything is based on that then it's a win-win <laughs> very very correct let's yeah. write a song <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> For more information on Eden, go to EdenSuston.com. For more information on Kim, go to KimLifeCoach.com. Make sure to follow them on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Talk Purpose and Truth Podcast. If you loved this episode, you'll love every episode. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thank you for listening. <laughs>